What's up guys? Today we're in the reptile room to talk about leopard gecko genetics. Okay, so if you didn't see my last video, it basically covered the base morphs of leopard geckos. So if you want to check out that video, I'll leave a link in the top right corner here so you can do that. We talked about snow. We talked about albino. We talked about white and yellow. We talked about tangerine, eclipse, and lastly blizzard. So what happens when you mix those genes together? Is it possible to mix those genes together? Let's find out. So in making this video, I had to come up with a standard of what do I consider a gene? So for the sake of this video, let's consider a gene something that alters the outward appearance of the animal. I will do a full genetics video on the exact science behind genes and morphs. But for the sake of what we consider in the hobby to be a morph or to be a gene, the ultimate goal is the outward display of the animal. So this video, when I say the word gene, we're going to think something that changes the outward appearance of the animal. Okay, so this little gem right here is what's called a super snow. As you can see, it kind of looks like a leopard with white undertones. In my opinion, this is a very beautiful morph. It's not hard to make, and it really only takes like one year of work to make these. So in our last video, we showed what happens when a leopard gecko has the mutated snow gene. Well, what happens when the leopard gecko has two mutated snow genes? This is what you get. It's called a super snow. It washes out all other colors on the gecko except black and white. And it creates this really nice colored and contrasted leopard gecko. Now what can also happen with the super snows is something very, very cool, which is called snow eyes. And that means that the eyes of the leopard gecko can turn all black. So you can see right there, the eyes of the leopard gecko can become all black. Now all of my super snows, this seems to happen with. So time will tell if this is a trait directly linked to super snow, meaning that you're gonna get it every single time you create a super snow. But so far, my odds have been 100% of the time I create a super snow and I get the gecko with the black eyes. So you can see its eyes are just completely black. You don't see any pupil or anything. It's pretty cool. It just looks like a cauldron of, like a witch cauldron of black tar. So a very cool gene. So I didn't want to use the same one as the last video, but here's a great example of a tangerine albino. Now, why do I call this two genes? Um, the tangerine gene, like I mentioned in my last video, is not a mutation. It's a line bred gene, meaning that you take geckos with the most orange and combine them and you get more orange. But I will consider that a gene for argument's sake because it does take years of combination and creation to get that level of orange. So what happens when you get that level of orange and then combine it with the albino gene? You get something called the tangerine albino. So in the tangerine albino, you can see that all the black pigment turns to a brownish color. Some of it will become a purplish color, like on the back of the neck here. Um, but you can see nice, you know, really nice orange highlights. The dad of this gecko has very nice green highlights on him. So that's why this girl right here is actually displaying very nice oranges, yellows, greens, a little bit of purple on the spotting there. And then, of course, that's just a standard brown right there. That would normally be very black on a non-albino. So again, in al albinism, you lose all of the black pigment. And even when you look at the eye of the leopard gecko, you will see that their eyes become very light colored, which is why she's actually squinting right now because the sun is 
in this room and it is uh, they, they have a little bit more sensitive eyes. So I'm going to shield her from the sun a little bit and see if we can get a shot of her eyes. Uh, that's a decent shot. So in tangerine albino leopard geckos, the eyes are going to take on more of a grayish color. For non-albinos, their eyes are typically going to be darker and more black pigment with black veins. But for albino leopard geckos, their eyes are going to uh, sometimes have red veins in it and will have more of a grayish appearance because again, you're losing some of that black pigment. But as you can see, very nice colored girl, deep orange tail. And that's what you get when you combine the tangerine gene with the albino gene. So here we have a very good example of an albino blizzard. So in the last video, we showed that a normal blizzard has a purplish color, but an albino blizzard has a much whiter color, sometimes almost a very light pink. This is a very good example of one. I actually called this one Mac in reference to the term Mac Snow, which is a gene of leopard gecko that displays high level of whites because when I got this guy, and still even now, he is so white, like you can really see. So again, the blizzard trait washes out all of his color, uh, all of his pattern and turns him into more of like a purplish grayish color. And then the albino gene, because it's taking away black pigment, the albino gene winds up taking away all of that gray, all of that purple, and turns him into just like a pure pinkish white. It's really cool. And there you can see a shot of his eye, how his eye is very gray, showing that he is an albino. Again, albino eyes will be a little bit more gray than regular leopard gecko eyes. Regular leopard gecko eyes will be a little bit more black. It's another good shot of his eye. And you can even see some red blood vessels in there. Okay, so this is actually a very beautiful example of another two gene combo we're talking about. Snow and Eclipse mixed together. So again, the snow gene washes out some of that yellowish pattern and creates a little bit more of like a whitish undertone to the gecko. And then the eclipse gene continues to fade out the patterning so that the gecko has more of a spotted patterning instead of bands. And the eclipse gene also has the effect on the eyes. The eyes of an eclipse leopard gecko can be completely black, half black, or partially black. So in this gecko, the eyes are all black, as you can see right there. Um, a lot of snows have a heightened appearance of the blue right above their eyes. My personal thought is that it has, it has something to do with the transparency of their pigment in that area. Whereas in a normal leopard gecko, that area would be covered by darker pigment, you know, uh, orange skin, yellow skin, on a snow leopard gecko that loses a lot of that pigment and becomes very transparent. I think the skin just shines through a little bit to like its eyeball area um, because leopard geckos are actually very transparent creatures. That sounds funny saying it, but you can see when you look underneath their belly, you can see their organs, which actually makes them very nice to breed because you can see when the females are ovulating. They will have a fairly large size pink dot like right in their upper stomach area and usually another one staggered down below on the other side of their stomach signifying that they're ovulating and ready to start breeding for that season. And that's one way you can tell. You just flip them over, you know, just like I did now, just kind of look at their belly. And because their skin is very transparent, you can see those ovulations pretty easily. Okay, guys, now this is an exciting one to show you. This is called a tangerine eclipse. 
So you can see a lot of the orange in the tail, but why is it called a tangerine when it kind of looks more yellow? So remember with the eclipse gene, it not only washes the pattern out, but it can also have the effect of washing the brightness of the color out. So this was a tangerine leopard gecko, bright orange, like the other ones that you've seen in this video and the last video. But why is it now more yellow? Because when you take the tangerine and mix it with the eclipse gene, what you get is a little bit of washing out of the color. Can you fix that, so to speak? Can you create a eclipse tangerine leopard gecko that winds up being more orange rather than yellow? The answer is yes, but it will take time. Going back to that concept again of line breeding, you have to take the most orange geckos and breed them with the most orange geckos to create even more orange geckos. So as the years go on, I will keep back certain babies that display more orange with the eclipse gene. I will breed them to each other and they will create even more orange eclipses. Now that is one tactic. Another tactic you could do is, this is a girl right here. If I can find a really orange boy for her that is also eclipse or het for eclipse, then the orange pigment of the boy will pass along to her and also her slightly orange pigment and the eclipse gene will pass on to their babies. And the goal would be that their babies would be more orange than, more orange and eclipse than the mom right here. So again, when it comes to mixing the eclipse gene into other lineages and other colors, just keep in mind what the eclipse gene is gonna do is something really cool. It's gonna alter the eye color of the gecko. It's gonna alter the pattern of the gecko, but it's also going to slightly dial down the brightness of the color. So that can be good depending on what projects you have in mind, but everyone has their own projects they wanna work on, right? Some people want brightness, other people want, you know, the eclipse eyes. Um, so there, this is actually another good example right there of an eclipse that does not show the half eye or the full eye. You can see right there, this eclipse only has a partial, very small percentage of her eye is covered with the black pigment that is significant of eclipse. So right there, you can kind of see like around her pupil is a little bit extra black highlighting. That's the eclipse gene at work in her eyes. And her lack of banding and color is the eclipse gene at work in her pigment. So ultimately, the ultimate goal for an eclipse leopard gecko is an all red eyes, bright orange leopard gecko. Is that possible? People are working towards that right now. In breeding, it's always nice to have a goal. So is it possible? Yes. Is it absolutely here in the hobby right now? Not really. I have not seen too many very nice orange with bright red eclipse eyes leopard geckos. But is it possible? Yeah. I mean, I think reptile genetics has come so far and is going to continue going so far. And that's one of the reasons why leopard geckos are so popular is because they have come a long way in the hobby of combinations and traits that you can combine. Okay, last but certainly, certainly not least is what's called the super giant leopard gecko. I can actually feel his heartbeat. <laughs> That's how big this boy is. The super giant gene is a size altering gene. You might be saying, what? What is a size altering gene? Well, <clears throat> most leopard geckos will typically get about seven to eight inches, maybe 80 to 90 grams. But for super giant leopard geckos, they get gigantic compared to normal leopard geckos. I can feel his heartbeat. That's crazy. I wasn't able to feel the heartbeat of any of the other geckos. It's hard to get a reference of just how big he is in my hand. And actually, I have some non-super giants that are just about as long as he is. This boy, last time I measured him, was nine and a half inches long, which is not crazy because, again, if normal leopard geckos get seven to eight inches long, what's another inch and a half? 
But along with that inch and a half comes density and thickness. Now, it's really hard to tell, but the size of this boy's head right there, ouch, it makes me cringe thinking if he was to bite me full force because the wideness of his jaws, you can see all of that muscle just piled up right there, ready to chomp on its prey or predator that stalks it. So this is a leopard gecko gene that makes the geckos slightly longer and definitely heavier than the normal leopard gecko. Other than that, they are just like normal leopard geckos. You can create different combinations, and this one is an albino supergiant. So albinism is one gene that takes out all the black pigment, and then supergiant is the other gene that makes this gecko huge. <laughs> no other real term for it. He's just a big boy. I actually named him Shelby when I got him because I was hoping it was a girl because at the time I needed an albino girl. Now I don't necessarily and I'm glad he's a boy because boys can pass their genes on much more quickly in breeding than girls can because uh, boys can, you know, mate with multiple girls and pass their genes on. He's my, my beautiful boy here and he's being very good today, being very well behaved. Another reason why leopard geckos just make the best pets, not only are they easy to breed and create combinations and color morphs, but I mean, look at this. He's just sitting in my hand. You can watch TV with them. They're not expensive to take care of. I'll do a completely different video on setup and care, but they can be very happy in just a normal breeder setup like this where they have a humid hide a water bowl a food dish and they'll just kind of walk around there um, mostly at night during the day they're going to be sleeping mostly so you can see all these guys here are mainly sleeping when it's bright out right now at night i'll come in and you can see them all moving around and hear them you know um and i have my different thoughts of why i really like this setup and you can set them up any way you'd like there's so many different ways to set them up, but they have essential needs. And um, based on those essential needs, I will create a video that will allow new caretakers of leopard geckos to kind of create their own setup and see what setup they like and what's going to work best for them. But leopard geckos are very happy in a simple setup like this. So Shelby, and it actually worked out because even though I named it Shelby, I don't know why I named it Shelby. And was hoping it was a girl, but um, Shelby actually works because Shelby Mustang, right? And Mustangs are like big beefy cars. And so this is a big beefy leopard gecko boy and um, he represents the name Shelby well. So even though my hand's in front of him right here, you can see just how large he is. Oh, did you just lick me? Um, let me put my hand behind him and you can see as he's crawling just how big he is next to my hand and he wants to go away because it's bright out here and he's an albino he's a beautiful albino look at him look at our big boy here hi sweetheart okay say goodbye to the camera and everybody okay we're gonna put you back well there you have it guys six popular two gene morph leopard geckos in the next video i make i will talk about more than two gene morphs. So now we're gonna talk about combining three genes, four genes, even a five gene animal that I have here. With each level of genes, obviously the value goes up, the rarity goes up, um, and therefore the price goes up of the, the leopard gecko because it takes more time. So we will get more in depth into three gene plus animals in the next video. And if you like, leopard gecko videos definitely subscribe to this channel because in the next couple months we are going to be covering a more in-depth look of genetics so we're going to talk about the science behind genetics what is recessive what is dominant what is incomplete dominant what is polygenetic or line bred i will go into extreme detail into each one of those with graphs and display models and all kinds of stuff to help you understand it, as well as examples of how to draw out a chart and predict 
what babies you will get when you breed certain parents. So that is all coming in the next couple of months. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you guys and have a geeky gecko great day.